This week we're working on Excel module six. So we're starting off by learning how to freeze and unfreeze panes in your worksheet. <clears throat> so to do this, what you're going to want to do is first of all, uh, make sure you're at the correct worksheet, of course. So make sure you're on the correct tab to where you want to freeze or unfreeze your panes in your sheet. Um, You'll, you'll click on the section where you want to do this. Um, you'll want to go to the View tab, which is where it has the options for doing what you want to do. When you're in that section in the window group, you'll see the, the option for freezing panes. When you get here, there's an option for freezing your top row. You do not have to select your top row or anything else, if you just select freeze top row, it automatically, do you see this little thin black line that goes all the way across? That has frozen my top row. And now I can scroll all the way down. This is very useful if you have tons and tons and tons of rows of data. And you wanna make sure that whatever is in that top row um, is stays stationary there. And that way you can as you continue to scroll down or enter data as you're going down through your work worksheet, um, you can see what's up there. This is very helpful. Um, I use this constantly when I'm working in Excel. So this may be a helpful tool for you in the, in the future to use that. If you are done working with that or don't need to use that anymore, you can just go back from the view tab um, in the Windows group, click freeze panes and then just unfreeze those panes and it'll unfreeze it for you and you can go working normally. If you need to freeze like your first column, maybe you have names over here. I use this a lot when I'm working with students in my class and I'm entering grades or whatever I'm doing in my Excel spreadsheet. I can freeze my first column and that way as I'm going through there, through my worksheet or whatever, and entering data, no matter how far over I go, um, I've got my student names there and I can see and I don't have to go through and hide cells or hide columns or anything. I, I just have the data available and then I can scroll back and forth across. So that's a useful tool as well. And you'll be using that here in module six. And so again, just unfreeze the paints. Um, another item that, that will be helpful for you, say that you've got data in a column and in a row and you wanna freeze both of those. So what you're gonna to want to do is go to the right of the column and below the, the row that you wanna do. So if I wanna freeze column A and row three, I'm gonna to go to cell B4 and click in that cell. And then again, I go up to my freeze panes and then I'm just gonna click in freeze panes. And do you see how it's frozen? column A and it's frozen row three. And now when I'm scrolling, um, column A is stationary and row three is stationary. So you can do that as well. And then of course, when you go back up here, you can just unfreeze those panes. If, you've, if you messed up, if you did the wrong one or whatever, you can um, change that back up. Okay, so hopefully that's clear on how to freeze rows and columns and all that good stuff. Um, the next thing I wanted to show y'all was how to create a table, okay? You're going to be starting working with tables a lot in Excel, and these are awesome to work with, okay? When you're working with data and, and you have a range of data in here. So this is an example. This is just a regular range of data. So I've entered in my data in an Excel worksheet, and... I have this range here and the benefit to using tables I'm going to be showing you as we go through this is really awesome. So this is, as you see, as we go through here, you're going to see why it's beneficial to have a table created. So to do a table, I'm going to go up here to, from my ribbon at the top, I'm going to click my insert group. And from this table group, I'm just going to select table. Now make sure I have the range of data selected. So I don't necessarily want to, to click on my header up here at the top. I just want this data selected. Anything that I want inside 
of my table, that's what I want to select. Okay, so if you have headers at the top of it, you want to select that too. You don't just want to click on um, the data that's in there. If you have headers, go ahead and select those two as you're creating your table. Okay, and then you're just going to click on table. Okay, it's going to ask you again, where is the data for your table? Okay, so this is just a, a double to, for you to double check and make sure you have the right data selected. So you can double check it. And again, look at here, what's there? Those are dollar signs in front of all those rows and columns. So that's just making sure it's making that an absolute value. Remember we learned about absolute values a couple of modules back. That's just locking in those rows and columns to make sure that it doesn't move. It's making that stationary right there. It's locking in those rows and columns and all of those cells to make sure that that table is locked in, okay? And if you have headers up here like I do, like in this, in this um, table or in this range of data, I have headers at the top. I have department, admission, service, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Those are all headers at the top. If you have headers in your table, you want to check this box that I have headers. If you don't, then uncheck the box. So in the future, if you don't have headers, if you're making a table, uncheck that box. But if in this case, we do have headers, so make sure that box is checked and you'll click OK. And then you get all these other cool options that we'll learn about as we go through here. But that is how you create a table. Okay. Um, styling a table. Okay, this is where we get fun here. Um, make sure your table is selected again. Usually you can click anywhere in it to select it. If you have to just highlight around your table. And this cool tab gets up here, table tools design tab up at the very top of your ribbon. Once your table is selected, you'll get table tools design tab up at the top. So it's going to bring up a whole new option for you, a whole new um, set of options for you to use just to design your table. So Excel's pretty cool. Once you've created something in there, you get a whole new um, design set of design features that you can go in and style and design whatever you have created within Excel. So this is where it gets really awesome for you in here. So what I want to do when I'm styling my table, that means to style something is to kind of give it a little bit more color and add a little bit of depth to it, okay? So if I'm creating this like for, um, maybe you've got a class that you're doing a presentation for and you need to, to add, you wanna add some visual effects to it. You always wanna add visuals when you're doing presentations and stuff. So, and um, they've already started this header for us with this pretty gold color up here. So we wanna find a color that matches that. And I believe it's gold accent five or something like that. And so I wanna go up here in this style table and find that gold accent, gold table style medium five, okay? So they made it really easy for us. And it's like, I guess the sixth one or so listed up here. So we can just click on that. But if it wasn't that simple, I can go down here and expand out this menu and I've got light colors, I've got medium colors, I've got dark colors. I can create a new table style or I can clear all those options, okay? So that is how you're gonna style your table with those options and it's not letting me do it right now. Well, anyway, that is normally how you do it. I don't know why it's not letting me right now, but that is typically how it works to style your table. My Excel is acting funny on me today, but just know that that's, that's how it's supposed to work. <laughs> anyway, um, I probably have done it too many times um, in here going through this assignment. Um, when you're naming your table, okay, once you have that table selected in here, you go also go up to your table tools design tab under the properties group and you see where table name is and in module five we learned about naming 
items. We named some rows, we named um, some areas, we associated names and did some different things like that. So we're gonna name this table and this is where you're gonna enter in your table name. So you'll name it and again, when you're naming stuff, Anytime you're naming something, whether it's the name of your workbook, whether it's the name of a row, whatever it is you're naming, make sure you choose a name that makes sense. Okay, that's the most important thing. You wanna name something that makes sense because when someone's coming in behind you, um, looking at it, if you're working in an office, working on a group project, whatever it is, when someone comes behind you on your work, they need to, if they're looking for something particular, they need to be able to to find whatever it is they're looking for. So you always want to leave kind of breadcrumbs as you're working in documents or writing code or whatever it is you're doing. Um, whenever you're creating something, um, especially in group work, you always want to leave breadcrumbs so that people know what you were doing and what your train of thought was so that they could come in behind you and follow along whatever it is you were doing um, so that they can pick up where you left off and, and take off with it. So always name things that, that make sense along with what you're doing, okay? So you'll name that, I think this one is cardiac care. And again, a naming convention, see how this says table six here and there's no, no spaces or anything like that. And um, when you're naming things in Excel, and this is this holds true with, with lots of other, other things in technology, you don't wanna put spaces in things in between. Um, it's just, it's just caught good, good practice um, to not put spaces in everything. Um, okay, so. So this is the name of the workbook down here is cardiac care. And so when I'm naming it up here, cardiac care is not gonna have a space in it. Um, usually like when you're doing names in columns and things like that, you can put spaces there because that's like a, a visual, okay? That we can see it's like for, for us, when we're naming it kind of behind the scenes, this is something that we can't see. This is more for the computer to kind of grab onto. That's why we don't put spaces there because anytime you put a space, that's an extra character and the computer is calculating that as, a, as another character and it disassociates it with, with the other naming conventions in there. I don't know if that makes sense to you. And um, it works in my mind because I've, I've worked them in, in coding and in programming and so that makes sense to me. It may not make exactly sense to you, but for anything behind the scenes that we necessarily can't see, please don't put spaces and things like that. That's why you don't. But for visual things that we can see like column headers and um, things like that, it is okay usually to put spaces. So I hope that helps explain it a little bit. Sorry, trying to help y'all understand a little bit of this stuff. Okay, let's move on to um, sorting data a little bit. Um, let me go over, we'll stay in, go over to the Cancer Center um, tab to do this. Okay, when you're sorting data, there's a couple of different ways that you can sort data. So after you've created a table, you see that there's these little um, down arrows up here that you can sort data. So of course you can go to that and you can easily sort A to Z, okay? So I can sort this row A to Z. That's great, I can do it that way. But what that does when I do that, I can only do one sort that way. So just remember, if you only need to sort one item in your table, sure, you can go to that column and sort something like that. But it only sorts and it deletes the prior sort. Okay, so if you just need to quickly sort something and see that one thing, by all means, please go up here and use these sorts, but just know it deletes all your prior sorts, okay? If you need to sort by a couple of things, here is how you're gonna want to do that. So again, highlight your table, just to make sure all the rows are included in that. And then you're gonna go up to your insert, 
sorry, um, you're going to go to your data tab and then your sort. When you click on that sort, it gives you the column you want to sort by. Okay, and so you can go ahead and start sorting that. And I think this tells us to sort um, ascending order for the admission field. So I'll click on admission. We'll go ahead and sort ascending means A to Z. Descending would be the reverse of that, Z to A. So I'm going to sort it in ascending order from A to Z. Now, if I want to add an additional sort, which means I'm going to sort first by admission, but the second item I want to sort by, I want to look first by admission and second by the service field. So I'm going to add a level and then I'm going to put in service and this is also by ascending, which is A to Z. So this is the order that it will sort my table in. So first it's going to sort by their inpatient, outpatient, A to Z, and then it's going to sort by how um, their service, okay? So this is how it would sort. So you can add multiple layers in there. So if I decide I want to delete one of these levels, I would just, I'm sorry, I would delete a level or if I messed up and put the wrong thing or something like that, then I can just add back a level or whatever if I want to do it by a different, different way or something like that. Um, I can do that. I can also sort it by different options how to sort. It doesn't have to be by cell values. It can be by color. It can be by conditional formatting. It can be by different, different things like that. Okay. So that is how that one works. Um, hopefully that was helped you understand sorting. Okay, adding a total row. This is one of the biggest benefits to having um, a table, okay, is adding row, adding total rows and things like that. So I'm gonna stay here in this tab so now that I have my table, I'm going to go back up here to my design tab. And in this table style options, I have this nifty section here. I can make sure that I have headers. I can make sure that I have total rows, banded rows, all kinds of things like that. When I select total row, look what automatically comes up. It automatically totals my entire table for me. And if I wanna to add totals to every single row, all I have to do is click. Look, when I click under this, look, it gives me the option to either sum that, to total that up. I can do an average down there. I can count how many were in. If I wanna count how many was in a section, I can count that. Um, so if I wanted to do a count of this and count how many rows I have, I can do that. Um, if I want to do an average of all of these, I can average that. If I just want to do a total of that, I'm going to click sum. Okay, so I've got all of these options. Once I've added that total row down there, I automatically, all I have to do is click in the column down at the bottom and when that arrow comes up down there, all I have to do is click on that arrow and it will automatically give me those options. So that is one of the coolest tools about using a table, okay? So that is how you do that. Um, so if I want to remove a table. So I put a table in and then I've decided that I want to take a table out. Let me see which which one I want to take out. Let me go over to this one real quick. So I created this table and now I've decided that I want to take this table out. Um, I'm again going to go back up here to the table tools design tab once I have that selected. 
and I'm going to just select convert to it's going to ask me, do you want to convert your table to a normal range? I'm just going to click select and it's back to a normal Excel range. I can't do any of those cool things. My option up here is gone for my table tools design tab because it's no longer a table. It's again a range. So if I wanted to add it back to a table, I just select that. I go back to my insert tab and I make it a table again. So that's how that works, okay? Um, if I want to insert subtotals into a range, so I've created this back to just a regular range, and now I want to add subtotals in this range, okay? I'm gonna highlight the range of data and you don't want to select your um, headers at this point. If you just have a regular range of data, you just want to select the actual data that you want to do. You don't want to add those, those, um, those headers in that. But I want to select this range of data. I want to go up to the data tab. And I'm going to go over here to this outline group over here. And then I can select subtotals, okay? When I select this, I'm gonna just follow the directions, whatever the directions tell you to do at this point. Um, let's see if I can go through this with you real quick. At each change in, oh, am I not on the right? I'm on the right one. Oh, I didn't select it, hang on. I guess we do need to select the headers because they're wanting us to use headers on this, I apologize. Click to select our subtotals. So at each change in admission, we're going to use our function sum. We're gonna sum up and we're gonna add subtotals to 21, 22, and 23. So we're gonna add subtotals to each one of these years. So at each change in admission, we're gonna use the function sum to add subtotals to 21, 22, and 23 and leave these two boxes checked and check them if they're not, they should be checked automatically. We're gonna replace our current subtotals and our summary below the data. So that means it's gonna summarize below the data and if there's any current subtotals, we're gonna replace them. And then you click okay. So now this is just a regular range of data. It kind of looks like a table, but it's just a range and it's giving us for each change in admission, it's giving us a subtotal for 21, 22, and 23. So in each change, so for inpatient, for outpatient, and our grand totals, okay? And so that one's how that works. And which one is this one? I think this one is in this. Let me show you how to do. Okay, if I want to insert a new column or row into a table, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. If I have a header up here that's a little, I mean, I've got this header that's at the top. So it's, it's with my table, but it's a little separated. If I have something like that, I want, and I want to add a new column to the table, what I'm gonna do in this one is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight where I want that to go. So in this case, for this assignment, it's telling me to add it to G. So I'm gonna highlight G, so I'm gonna click on G at the top, so it's gonna select the entire um, column G. 
And then I'm going to go to insert. Sorry, home sales. Okay, I'm going to go to the home tab up here, go to the sales group and click insert. So I have column G highlighted. I'm going to go to the home tab, the sales group and the insert um, option here. And once I do that, I'm going to insert a sheet column. When I do that, it's going to go ahead and select. It's going to extend out this um, gold color at the top of my header. And then when I go down here to where it wants me to extend out the next year, it tells us to add 2024. When I type in 2024, it's going to go ahead and extend out the color in that table. Okay. Um, that's how we're going to do that for this assignment. You can, like if I wanted to add a row inside this, I can click insert, table rows above, table columns to the left. If I want to insert something inside the table, within the table, I can insert it that way. But if you're wanting to do something outside, of the table, like extending it out, that is the best way to do it, is the way that I just walked you through it. So you'll select where you want it to go, go to the home tab, the sales group, and click insert. Okay, that is how I did it when I worked through this assignment. That was the best way. I tried it a few different ways, and that's how I did it. And when I submitted my assignment, I got 100. So that's how the best way that I found to do it. Okay, so that's how I wanted to show y'all to do it. Um, when you're adding a record on this one, oh, I think this was on a different one. When you're adding a record, number seven was the cardiac care. Over here, we were missing a actual record. Sorry, I'm flipping back and forth in my notes just to make sure I show y'all in the right place. So this one, again, was not a table. You know, it's just a range of data. I'm going to select, I'm going to click on the row number to highlight a row. Again, in the home tab, sales group. I'm going to click insert sheet row and that's going to give me a new that didn't do right yeah it did it's going to insert the sheet row that I need to insert here and I'm going to be able to insert that sheet information okay so that is how you insert a row into um, a range of data that you have. Um, okay, duplicate values. Let me get back to that. Okay, keys are center. Sorry, I'm flipping around a little bit on your sheet. Okay, if I'm, this is conditional formatting, oh, du duplicate values with conditional formatting. So again, I'm gonna select the table or the range of data. So I'm selecting my table here from the home tab in the styles group. I'm gonna select conditional formatting. I'm gonna use the highlight cells rule and go to duplicate values. Okay, so for here, I'm going to um, light red with dark red text, click OK. 
and that's how it's, it's going to show me the duplicate values. If I want to remove duplicate records, I again want to highlight that group. I want to select remove duplicates. This is on number nine, I think. No, this is a different one. This is on this one. I'm going to select this. Select your table, table tools design tab. In the tools group, you just select remove duplicates. And then you're going to check the boxes that you want to remove duplicates. And it tells us only to choose admissions and service. So make sure you scroll up and down and just have these two selected. So again, make sure you use that scroll bar and deselect all the others and just select admissions and service. Okay. You should have one duplicate record found. So you have nine unique values and you'll select OK and it'll remove that one duplicate record. Um, I think this is the last thing. And um, data bars, we've already done data bars. This is continued on. I think we did that in module four. Um, you're going to select the range where the data bars are located. Yeah, I think this was the number 10, maybe. You'll select the range, which was D4. I think to F12. You'll go again, it's just the home tab and it's on conditional formatting. You'll select data bars and you're just going to change it to solid green, is all you have to do there. Okay, I think that's it for this time. Um, hopefully that was helpful for you. Hope y'all have a great day and I'll see you guys soon.